If you just joined us on the system after dark, this is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. In tonight's bulletin, Fiji welcomes India's intention to play a greater role in the Pacific region. Dialysis Center opens for kidney patients in the Northern Division. And 18 year old crowned Miss Hibiscus. Prime Minister Vorenga Banimarama has welcomed India's stated intention to play a greater role in the Pacific region. Speaking at the second forum for India-Pacific Island Corporation, or FIPIC, Baini Marama urged India to stand with Pacific Island nations in the fight against climate change. Ritika Pratap reports. Top leaders and representatives of the Pacific Island countries gathered in Jaipur, India for the first regional summit. The summit provided a platform for small island nations to voice their concerns about a number of global challenges and seek India's help. Part of the global heritage, the Pacific belongs to the world, but it is also our home, and we insist that it be respected, for our people never gain to be pawns or victims of disputes between the great powers. Prime Minister Warringe Baini Marama urged his Indian counterpart to support the region and stand against the coalition of selfish. He and his Pacific neighbors intend to lead the charge for drastic cuts in carbon emissions at the World Climate Summit at the end of November. We have precisely 14 weeks to persuade the industrial nations to put our survival before the well-being of their carbon polluting industries. Beni Marama also stressed Fiji's desire to take a leading role in multilateral fora to advance the interests of the Pacific nations. I again extend Fiji's hand of friendship to my fellow Pacific Islanders, whether it is by sending you our civilian volunteers, our teachers or nurses, or helping you to build resilience against the extreme weather events that threaten us all. Beni Marama says Fiji will strongly support India's bid to become a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. He has also pledged Fiji's continuous contribution to UN peacekeeping missions. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. More than 20 people presented their submissions at a public consultation on the national budget in Lotoka. Attorney General Ayan Sayed Kayum says the consultation also provides a good platform to inform the public about the budget process. Ritika Pratap reports. The second round of public discussions was held in Lautoka yesterday. Submissions range from a whole range of uh, you know, ideas and groups of people, uh, you know, the disabled associations, the individuals who may have some idea about uh, how the economy can be improved. Attorney General and Finance Minister Aya Sayed Kayum says most of the submissions made looked at improving government services water and electricity and roads. He says special schools have also come forward with some strong submissions. There's also been uh, some submissions that we received by email where <clears throat> whilst we're giving $125 for example per child uh, for primary school, uh, what uh, some submissions we received have uh, they've said you need to distinguish between uh, the special schools and the mainstream schools because the funding required for special schools is a lot more than say mainstream, mainstream schools. Sayed Kayum says the finance ministry will hold one-on-one -on -one consultations with some of the larger organizations and NGOs. In the meantime, the public can continue to forward their written submissions. The last public consultation will be held in Lambasa on Saturday. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. A new dialysis center has opened at the Lambasa Hospital for kidney patients requiring dialysis. Patients will now not have to worry about traveling to Suva for dialysis treatment. Ellen Stoltz reports. Health Minister Chone Usamate commended the community for contributing funds towards the Northern Dialysis Center. At the same time, he assured guests that the government will continue to improve medical services. So we will continue to invest in more stuff. 
more equipment as much as possible. And we also are looking to improve the system of making sure that medicines are available when they are needed. Osamate says services are crucial for people suffering for kidney ailments. However, he adds it's important for everyone to live healthy lifestyles. We have facilities like this to deal with people that are already sick. But as society, as a country, one of our roles and responsibilities must be Queen's Remember, talk about this during the French okay? Talk about this. The importance for people to take responsibility for their own health. Your health is your business. The new dialysis center costs $250,000 and contestants from the Vodafone Friendly North Festival helped raise funds for it. Its opening has brought much relief to kidney patients. Before we used to go to Suva eh, for all the kidney checkup and now it's here in Lambasa. Um, so we, that's, we save a lot of uh, money. Eh? We are thankful for the opening of the center and it will really help people. The dialysis center will cater for kidney patients requiring dialysis treatment in the northern division and the fees are set at $150 a treatment. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. 18-year-old Miss Carpenters Marie Fall has been crowned Miss Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus. Fall will represent Suva in the upcoming Miss Fiji pageant, which will feature winners from other festivals around the country. Alan Stalls has more. Tears streamed down her face as crowd favorite Miss Carpenters, Mary Fall, was announced a winner of the main crown last night. Today, she was back at the festival venue, cleaning up the deluge of rubbish left behind by festival goers. I've been told that I'm immature and that I don't have what it takes uh, to stand up and voice my opinions at a public level. And so uh, this crown is proof that anything is possible, regardless of your experience, your education, and your age. Fall also won the Miss Photogenic and Miss National Tourism titles in the festival. I think about the crowning, like, it was fair for... I think it was fair that Marie Fall won this uh, waterfall hibiscus. And we like uh, what we like about the hibiscus today because of the weather. It was good. It was fair for all of us, the weather and the judging. I came all the way from Nokonoko in Ra just to watch the crowning, and I'm so happy Marie Falls won. I like her the best. Fall will compete in the Miss Fiji competition later in the year for a chance to represent the country at the Pacific Island pageant. Miss Suva City Council Sarah Vamarasi won the Miss Charity and first runner-up crowns. Miss FBC Nalisha Umarao was second runner-up and Miss APCO Andi Pula Verevalu won third runner-up. Miss Frinko Haya Olivia Vakasoso is the fourth runner-up in the King's category. Mr. APCO Tevita Tombe Aweni was crowned Mr. Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus. Mr. Trendy Fashion Timothy Dupour took the first runner-up prize, while Mr. Lay Entertainers Ashnil Sharma came in second place. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Well, the Hibiscus Events Group says although the festival did not turn out the way it wanted it to, the members will work on improving the event next year. The organizers say it could have been one of the most unique festivals had it not been for the deplorable weather experienced over the week. Chanel Sivan reports. It was certainly not the kind of festival the organizers had planned for. However, there has been a lot of learning in the past week. Uh, one thing I can assure you, come next year if you give the opportunity to hold the festival here again, uh, it will be far much uh, welcoming or better than what we present this year. Committee member Linga Kukisuva says their debriefing session will give them an opportunity to reflect on what was done and what needs to be improved. There were also concerns from contestants, particularly about Lita, left behind at the venue. We did a lot of work this morning in terms of picking up a lot of rubbish. There was a lot everywhere. And so that was uh, really, I think, kind of tiring. So yeah, it was really uh, such a sight to see when we got here in the morning and we just saw um, a lot of rubbish everywhere. There were styrofoam packs floating in the ocean. 
The Hibiscus Events Group will have to look for a suitable and a permanent venue for next year as Albert Park is being renovated. Talks about changing dates. Is that something that you will put at the back of your mind? We never close the ideas to anything that better the uh, participation and the uh, implementation of the event. Despite the poor weather conditions and complaints from vendors about losses in business, organizers have achieved what they wanted, that is to raise funds for charity. The contestants raised over $81,000. Every year we put out a uh, public uh, notice, uh, public announcement to those wanting to be part I uh, want to share from the charity chest. Uh, we'll do the same thing this year once we finalize an audited account and the whole uh, financial mechanism. It's back to the drawing board for the hibiscus organizers, where they may have to look at dates for the festival as well as a new venue for 2016. Channel Shivan, FBC News. In the news ahead, boarding facilities and teachers' accommodation to be upgraded at Ravitake District School in Kandabu. Welcome back here with FBC News. New leaders of the Methodist Church in Fiji are looking forward to taking the church forward in their three-year term. The leaders who were elected at last year's annual conference were officially installed today. Savaratambua has more. A diverse range of music hymns, songs from the Banaban and Rituman communities, Lawan Polotu and Hindi Bajan, were all part of the installation service today. This, according to Church President Reverend Tebi Tanawanda, signifies the new exodus or Lakoyaniwo that the Church will focus on. Those of us who were inducted, uh, the emphasis on leadership. The leadership, uh, you know, the, there are all sorts of type of leadership. Uh, but uh, the leadership that was uh, pre presented today was the leadership that followed the footsteps of Jesus Christ himself, uh, the humility and, and all those that uh, goes with that. Mm. The first time Bible verses were read using Braille and sign language marched to the delight of persons with disabilities. Before, we, when we, we uh, didn't have any Braille Bible like this, so we... we we thank God that he has given us the talent to read uh, his word, which is in Braille, to know him more closely. Thank you. I am happy that the church invited us for the service. We are so fortunate to be part of the auspicious occasion. The Methodist Church Annual General Meeting will be held tomorrow. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. A new secondary school will be established in northern Yasawa. Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy gave his approval after visiting two schools on the island to determine whether it is appropriate to establish a junior secondary school. The Northern Yasawa has six rural island primary schools. Parents find it difficult to send their children to the mainland for further education. The government will provide $100,000 for the new school in Nadula. The school is expected to begin classes from next year. Government through the Ministry of Education has given $80,000 to Ravitaki District School in Kandavu to upgrade facilities for students. The funding was handed over by Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy during a recent visit to the school. Julie Vatuwaliwali reports. It's been years now since Ravitaki District School requested assistance from the Education Ministry for the much-needed infrastructure upgrade. <laughs> During the first term school break, we went to inquire about it as the application had been sent and it has been a while now. When we asked, we were told that there were no applications from us there. When we returned, after one week, we received a letter indicating that we have been given $80,000 assistance. Ravitaki District School caters for four villages with a role of 82 students, 28 of whom are boarders. The funding will be used for two major upgrades. First is for the construction of a new boys' hostel, which caters for 13 boarders. The current hostel is really old and it is very small. 
Building a new one was the main reason for our request. Another part of the funding will be used to build a new home for the teachers. There are currently four teachers in the school accommodating classes one to eight. There are four teachers' homes here. Two teachers are staying in one home. Our kindergarten teacher has also moved into the compound and is staying in a home intended for the fourth teacher. Majority of the students in the school are from Ravitaki village. Others come from the nearby villages and an island of Ravitaki. Julie Vatawaliwali, FBC News. Thirteen young people pitted their singing skills in the Sur Sankar show hunt for the singing sensation event in Suva. The competition was hosted by Sarigama Events Group. Two of the participants are 15 years old. The participants were given the opportunity to demonstrate their skills to the public for the first time. Youth and Sports Minister Lesenia Tuitumbo says the amount of musical talent in Fiji is immeasurable. He urged musicians to nurture their skills. I've also been uh, duly informed that uh, Sargama Events plan to excel in its initiative to promote more young talents, not only in uh, Bollywood centric music, music, but all other types of music. Similar talent searches will be held in the northern and western divisions next year. Turning her creative talent into a business venture, Fiji-born Australian-based jewellery designer Nasli Asgar is using her skills to contribute to organisations that work with marginalised communities. Tonight in our successful Fijian segment, Maggie Boyle tells us more about how Asgar's designs are contributing to the establishment of a safe haven for survivors of sexual abuse. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Suva-born Nazli Aska is back home to support a worthy cause. She has teamed up with the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre to raise funds for a safe home for survivors of sexual abuse. Gender discrimination is so entrenched in every aspect of our lives and the work that happens at FWCC and similar organisations uh, is really, really important. It's, it's a long-term commitment and they need all the help that they can get. So I'm just doing my small bit. FWCC coordinator Shamima Ali says $1 million is needed to set the home up and while there will be development funding, private and public support will also be sought. Because we are fundraising at the moment for, uh, for the home that we are setting up in, uh, in Suva for uh, sexually, uh, survivors of sexual abuse, and uh, particularly when they're over 17, and and uh, you know, uh, creating a exit st a strategy for them in terms of their education, so they don't, um, uh, you know, they, they become very vulnerable at that time, so they're not open to other exploitation and so on. Oscar says her creative flair started at a very young age, and her growing up in Fiji was a wonderful platform. And when I think about the multicultural experiment here, uh, taking place in many parts of the world, I don't know whether I'm looking back through rose-coloured glasses, but when I went to school, I had friends f from almost every um, ethnic group you can think of. Um, and so it was really um, quite um, a unique place to live in the 1970s and, and to grow up. It was, as I said, it was paradise. With a professional background in law and politics, Aska has come full circle and come back home to give back where she can. Each piece is unique and they're made using found objects, uh, antique objects, and also objects which are made by uh, refugee women in many parts of the world. Um, as I travel, I collect um, items that I can use in jewellery. So um, they're quite unique and people have been really taken up with them when they hear the stories behind the pieces as well. With all proceeds from the sale of the collection going towards the FWCC's safe home, Aska is going further and donating any remainders to the centre to sell. Ali says the partnership initiated by Aska will pave the way for future fundraisers. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up in sports, Nemani Nandolo achieves World Cup dream. And Fiji Sevens players prepare for next season.
छू 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 है है नमस्ते फिर जी आपके हर एक प्रॉब्लम की दवा लेकर मैं आ गई हूँ नौ से बारह बजे तक आपकी सहेली रेनू छू 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 फोर्टी में ट्वेंटी का दिखना है मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर नौ से बारह बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची इट्स हॉट Welcome to FPC Sports. Nemani Nandolo is ready to showcase his worth when he plays for the Vodafone Flying Fijians team at the Rugby World Cup next month. The Crusaders wing has been named in the 31 member team by coach John McKee and is one of the players expected to lead by example. Rohit Deo has more. Nemani Nandolo after missing out in 2011, Nemani Nandolo has made the final cut to feature at the Rugby World Cup. You know, it's every kid's dream to, to play at the top top level um, and, you know, to get the opportunity to, to be named in the 31 men's squad. It's, it's a big relief and, um, yeah, look, I'm, their family's proud, you know, and to have two of their own playing in uh, the World Cup. Obviously, Ter with the Wallabies and myself. Nandolo says all teams at the World Cup will be in top form. However, any team is beatable. We've got our work cut out for us and... Um, you know, against England, Australia and, and Wales, anything can happen at a World Cup. And, um, you know, as, as you've seen in the past. So, you know, look, we can't wait. And, um, you know, hopefully we can, you know, train well now, prepare well and, and you know, go over there with um, positive, um, you know, positive effects. Another player who will make his debut at a World Cup is Ben Volavola. The Crusaders bound first five is happy with the depth the side has, saying it does make his work easier. We've got great potential in, in our outside backs and also with the likes of our coaches, uh, Tabai Mats and also uh, Moji, who, who do a lot of work behind the scenes. And they help me out also to sort of get my head right for our calls. And yeah, just look, really looking forward to London. The Flying Fijians have been pulled with England, Australia and Wales for the event. Fiji plays England in its first match on the 19th of September at 7am. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Flying Fijians rugby team is back working hard for the World 7 Series, which begins in December. The side has been having gym sessions and changes are visible in the players. Rohit Deo once again. The memories of last season's victory are still fresh in all Fijians' minds, but more importantly, the quest for the Olympic gold. With other nations already getting players from the 15th code, for the phone, 57 coach Ben Ryan is having talks with the overseas base players for the availability in the abbreviated code. I'm sitting down chatting to some of the World Cup boys and um, I'll follow that up with visits to France and the UK to have some communication and negotiations with the clubs. But the local boys know that it's, it, it's their shirt for the overseas boys to take off them. Having said that, Ryan Edge replacing the players in the current squad will require a lot of hard work for the overseas base players. We are ranked number one in the world, and that is with our local based teams. So, you know, we'd be foolish to suddenly just try and stargaze straight away. Saying that, there are some very talented boys overseas, and so you just keep sticking to your policy, you pick on form. The national mentor adds that the players are training hard and changes will be visible in the new season. You know, your Osea Kalinasaus and others and Viliami Matas, they're a completely different body shape now. They're five weeks into some hard weight training um, because this, the World Series doesn't start till December, so we've got time to do that. The first tournament in the World 7 Series will be held on the 4th and 5th of December in Dubai with the Rio Olympics to be held next year. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Nandranga rugby side is $30,000 richer after the 59-24 win over Namosi in the Skipper Cup final yesterday. Namosi also walked away with $15,000. The Nandranga side proved too strong for their opponents, running in eight tries to Namosi's three. Uh, we knew coming to the final that uh, Namosi was a good team. They deserved uh, deserve, uh, finalists and we knew we had to come today to uh, bring our 100% effort to beat them and that's what we did. We just played our hearts out and uh, let the result uh, talk, to, talk by itself. Meanwhile, the Nandranga under-20 side received $15,000 for winning their division. Well, few brief showers were experienced over certain parts of the group. Easterly winds cover much of the southwest Pacific. A trough lies to the southwest of Fiji. Looking at temperatures, uh, most in most centres were in the high 20s. 
Nandi recorded 27 degrees, Suva hit 28 and Lotoka recorded 29 degrees. Bar recorded a high of 30 while Lambasa hit 31 degrees. Now the forecast for tomorrow, it should be cloudy periods with some showers of a Kandavu, southern Lao, the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers. Looking ahead to Tuesday, fine apart from brief showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Our main points again, Prime Minister Vorenge Baini Marama has urged India to stand with Pacific Island nations in the fight against climate change. Public consultations on the national budget are attracting various submissions from people. And kidney patients in the Northern Division can now receive dialysis treatment at a new dialysis centre in Lambasa. On to our poll question. Do you think the Hibiscus Festival is up to the standards of the previous years? You can visit our FPC website to take part. Also, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizens at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News. Now, you've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night.